what were the best parts about working at Facebook? There is so much. First off, what I said about the culture was true. Facebook moves really fast and it, it does feel like, uh, I mean, not entirely like a startup. Like when I joined Facebook in 2017, it was like 5,000 engineers, but it, it does have a lot of that, like, you know, the move fast and break things was still true, like yeah. back when I was there. But then on top of that, I think what I really like about Facebook is the culture around communication. There's one of the five cultural values, the original five, one of them was be open. And that one is so important, like for anybody who's interested in working at Facebook or currently works at Facebook. It's a culture that really prizes honesty and open communication. So that was something I really struggled with when I joined Facebook. I wasn't like writing enough workplace posts and asking questions and going out there and building relationships with teammates and just trying to add value to people and surface the problems I was facing. So Facebook is just a, a place where like you're just always communicating all the time. I think that's just how every company should be built because like when people are more aware of how others feel and what they're doing or problems they're going through, it just opens up more opportunity for collaboration. This leads into another thing that makes Meta very unique. I think that open communication an over communication culture is why Meta doesn't follow Agile and Scrum practices at all. Like pretty much nowhere in Meta uses Jira. A couple teams do, but like 90, 95% of teams just kind of run and gun and, and it's a very lightweight process. And it's because the glue that holds everything together is the constant communication. So you don't need this like very structured like Kanban board to figure out what everyone else is doing. People are just always talking about what they're doing like all the time. A thing that I thought you would say, which you didn't actually talk about too much is like the caliber of engineers. And I wonder if those things are correlated. Like the reason why Meta can survive without as much process is that there's a lot more trust because engineer talent is broadly just better. I wonder if that was another benefit or perk of, of the company. It's definitely true. Like, I mean, not to sound elitist, but like having that kind of run and gun, barely controlled chaos style, you, you need high performing engineers in order to do that. People who are very independent and can connect the dots themselves. Generally, what I've seen is that if a company has lower caliber talent, they need all that process almost to like police yeah. their own engineers. Cause if they don't have all the guardrails, then they'll just be lazy and like not get work done on time. But Meta, we all know Meta has top of market compensation. They hire really strong independent people who can put together the pieces themselves. So they don't really need like 35 Kanban boards yeah. <laughs> and like project managers to tell them what to do. So that's definitely um, a factor and it's kind of like a first world privilege that Meta has because they're able to pay so much per engineer and just save a lot of money. Like they don't have to have like 35, you know, 100 agile coaches to, yeah. <laughs> to get the engineers to do something. <laughs> what did you dislike about working at Facebook? Also a long list. I think the, the main thing that I dislike about Meta is that it's too short-sighted. It's... Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit better now because Meta does like a yearly performance review and then there's like a check-in in the summer. But back when, you know, I was at Meta, when you were at Meta, there was a full blown performance review every six months. And six months is not a lot of time because the performance review process in and of itself takes like two and a half months because you have to like open up, you know, peer requests for feedback, and then you take time to write the feedback, you submit, calibrations happen. It's like you only got to live your life for like three, three and a half months and then have to worry about PSC again. <laughs> so it really felt like, you know, you're on the hamster wheel constantly. And because the ratings happen every six months and people at Meta are very ambitious and they want to like get promoted and, and make more money very, very fast. It was really hard to get a project, like a long-term project that would take more than six months to manifest as positive benefits. It was really hard to get people to listen to you when you had an idea for that project. Cause everyone's like, can I just get my impact by PSC time? Yeah. So there's a ton of technical debt at Meta from like short-sighted decisions and clearly from people just trying to game PSC. Uh, so among the big tech companies, like I've only ever worked for, for Meta among the fan companies, but I know so many engineers at the other fan companies, but Meta probably has the lowest code quality among the fan companies. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, that's the trade-off you make when you have such immense speed and it's amplified by this rat racy six month PSC cycle. I think what's really interesting about your background in particular is that you are what we call a boomerang, which means that you worked at Meta or back then it was Facebook, you left and then you came back to the company. Maybe uh, I'd love to hear about your experience initially. How long were you working at Facebook in your first stint at the company? I was working there for about four years. How was your experience? It was great. I think I learned a lot. I went in with the mindset that I wanted to learn as much as possible so that in the future, if I ever left, I would be able to take that knowledge and be very valuable elsewhere. 
And then that's what I felt like I accomplished during my first four years there. So what was the trigger to then leave? It was just a matter of circumstance. I had been there for four years. Meanwhile, some friends were spinning up a startup and I thought that'd be really cool. Plus four year mark is kind of when you start to think about, oh, maybe should I stay longer? Should I uh, leave? And I decided, you know what? I'm not going to be young forever. I want to go take a risk and work at a startup. So that's what I did. Meanwhile, at I, I had been thinking about, oh, I had learned a lot at Meta. Um, and the reason I left wasn't because I was unhappy, but more because I wanted to learn elsewhere. But I didn't feel like I was getting that elsewhere at the startup. So I decided maybe it'd be good to uh, reconsider rejoining Meta or some other big tech company. So now you have been back at Meta for, I think, more than four or five years. Is that right? Yeah, it was, it's been great. Uh, I think there's a reason why I've been back for so long. I've continued to learn and grow. And I, during the layoffs in 2022 and throughout the tech industry, I, I felt very grateful to be employed uh, because I think in the 2010s, you know, you're, you feel invincible. You feel like you can get a job anywhere. But yeah. during the layoffs, I felt like, oh, you know what? I should be really grateful for what I have. Plus, I'm learning a lot. Um, also, I think just having the perspective of working at startup and working at a larger company, you start to see what the benefits of working at a larger company are, which is there is structure and structure is not always bad because in my case, I feel like structure gave me the room to grow my engineering skills and my career. Whereas at startups, it's really, you'll do anything. What do you not enjoy about Meta? So yeah, I, I think I don't enjoy some of the bits and pieces of bureaucracy that exist. So for example, you know, uh, with GDPR, and Japan having its legal framework and all these other countries now propping up clones of GDPR, you really have to think about privacy. Um, and Meta, you know, is very focused on privacy and that results in slower product development velocity. But what I've learned from talking to my friends at startups is they actually have to consider some of these things as well when they get to a certain size. So it's not just that Meta. But I also think uh, being at Meta, I don't know if I necessarily dislike this. It's just that one of the cons is you know that there is um, a cap to your financial upside, right? Like maybe it could be like NVIDIA where after 20 years, suddenly the, the stock like skyrockets, but it's probably unlikely. I know that staying employed at a big tech company that the financial upside is capped, but at the same time, there is stability and I can't complain because they do pay quite well. So yeah, don't want to complain. Can you start off by sharing your name and what years you worked at Meta? Uh, so Rusha Bihar, I worked at Meta as a software developer beginning 2018 until 2022, so around four and a half years. And before that, I also interned at Meta itself. So you actually joined as a new grad E3 engineer. Yes. What level did you end up leaving the company at? Yeah, sure. I was, I was at E6 when I left. Okay, amazing. So you got those three promotions, E3 to E6, within a bit more than four years. I'm curious, when you reflect as a full-timer and your rapid career progression, what were the things that you enjoyed the most about the company? The fact that the company is a lot more bottom-up than other general com other traditional companies that I've seen. Like you have your roadmap in your own control. You get to determine, you know, what you want to work on. As long as it aligns with the business needs, as long as you can make a case that, okay, this is how, you know, whatever I'm working on will be impactful and you can go start working on it. So that that's the part that I enjoy the most, uh, apart from the people and culture, of course, like the, those were undoubtedly, you, you're working with some of the smartest engineers around you. Uh, you have the scope and scale of the products is of course insane. I think that personally, that was the fact that mattered to me the most was that I felt like, oh, this problem statement makes sense to me. I feel that I want to solve it. And I had the support system all around me to go ahead and work on it. What were the things that you did not enjoy or you disliked the most about your time at the company? That's actually harder to answer. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there have been, ha would have been phases or like shorter stretches where I was probably, you know, a little unhappy, but all in all, there was nothing that I could not have a candid conversation with my manager or with my team lead about and, you know, get that result, get that fixed. At certain point, of course, with any company, there does become a lot of organizational overhead that, okay, you're creating a document and you're circulating it. And I don't think that's specific to Facebook. It's just as you grow roles, um, you know, like that, that is bound to happen. A lot of what you do is not execution, but just convincing and talking to people that this is what we need to be doing. This is what matters and so on.
I can share my perspective as well as someone who worked at Facebook for four and a half years. I joined Meta in 2017, left in 2022. I came in as senior engineer E5 and I left as a staff engineer E6. I made a detailed video about my compensation and how I did at the company every single performance review cycle. I'll leave a link for that in the description. What I valued most about Meta was what I'll call a permissionless engineering culture. Even though Meta is a huge company now, it still has an amazing hacker culture and you're empowered as an engineer to do whatever you want as long as you create impact. One big downside of Meta, especially when you're new, is that it can feel like a lot of your work is either wasted or it's very incremental. For example, I spent a couple years at Facebook working on something called Portal, which was a hardware video calling device. And Facebook probably spent a couple hundred million dollars in incubation, R&D, and marketing for this product. And yet, it got killed a couple years ago. Like when you're working in big tech, the company has no problem killing products that might have some traction, but haven't reached breakout velocity. And so my work, I don't think it was entirely wasted, but a lot of the things I spent a lot of time on are no longer available for the benefit of the company or for the broader world. Okay, thanks to everyone who talked to me. I'm gonna share a few patterns I observed. Every person I interviewed mentioned how Meta has amazing engineers and they have remarkably little process given how big they are. The scale at which Meta operates, both in terms of the number of users on the platform and the amount of profit the company generates, lets it attract brilliant people while maintaining a bottoms up culture. On the flip side, Meta has a poor culture around performance review and work-life balance. Multiple people told me that the frequent feedback and the focus on PSC or performance summary cycle can lead to an unhealthy environment. It's also easy to feel like your work is insignificant when you have so many talented engineers around you who are working really hard to try and land impact in a four to five month time horizon. Okay, thanks to everyone who talked to me. Let me know if I missed something or if you have any additional thoughts. Also, tell me what other company you want me to go research next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.